Welcome to the program. I'm Daniel Erasmus. Last week we looked at Section 11D of the Income Tax Act, and this week we continue with that discussion. And with me in the studio is Kevin Dan. Welcome back. Thank you. We looked at um, the purpose behind 11D, and we uh, looked at the difference between first tier, your big style innovations, and second tier innovations, which uh, really take the process forward. Yes. And you were explaining to us uh, the purpose behind 11D and some of the more specifics. Let's just go specifically to does Section 11D um, achieve its intended purpose when you look at why it was introduced into the Income Tax Act? And if you could just give us some, some detail on that. Absolutely. 11D was, is designed to encourage research and development in the fields of science and technology. It has been successful in this regard in that it encourages taxpayers to invest their money to find discoveries and inventions which will lead to patentability, registrations as designs, or uh, software that can be protected in terms of the Copyright Act. So it does encourage first-tier innovation, and, and it is therefore uh, successful. However, that's, that's not where the question actually ends. First-tier innovation on its own doesn't achieve economic growth or employment. For that, you need second-tier innovation, and Section 11D doesn't lead or encourage second-tier innovation. What is necessary for second-tier innovation um, are all the in-between steps to take an idea and to make it commercially viable. That is second tier innovation. And th this section doesn't encourage that. I suppose to, to really just try and, and demonstrate to the viewers the, the difference, I mean, what type of deductions can you claim under 11D? And, and if, if, if we have sufficient time, just to look at, at some of the other deductions you, you would want to be able to claim under second tier. Some of the deductions you'll be able to claim is, for instance, all the expenses in setting up your, your laboratory to do the research, um, your labs, doing, doing development on that, the, s the salaries of your, your researchers and so on. Things that you'd like to have included in that are all the support expenses, um, setting up uh, test runs for your production facility once set up. Um, when you encounter production hiccups and you've got to tweak the system and customize it for new developments in, in that industry, those aren't encouraged. Um, creating of internal business processes, that's a specific exclusion. And a lot of what makes companies profitable and successful is how efficient they are. And these are, are in large determined by the efficiency of their internal business processes. Well, I mean, just listening to what you've been explaining to me, that, that seems to, to cover all the areas that you would want to be able to claim deductions. So what can you claim deductions on then? Well, primary research in the fields of science and technology. Give me an example. For instance, researching a new vaccine um, or a new form of transmitting electricity that's more efficient. Those kinds of, of research would, would lead to um, a deduction. But however, there's no deduction or incentive for people to say, well, I've got this technology, but how am I going to roll it out to, to the marketplace? To the marketplace, exactly. So they would then just have to, to try and rely on the Section 11A, 11E, the normal and, and, deductions. and other normal deductions Ab that, that, absolutely. Would, be, that yes. would be applicable to them. Those who do qualify for the 11D, of course, get the 150 percent yes, uh, deduction on, on. So for every rand, they get one rand fifty. And then, just lastly, um, to the extent that you do qualify for these deductions, 150 percent deduction, of course, is a is a is a big deduction. Um, from a just a tax schemes perspective, what what is happening in the marketplace? Are people taking advantage of this? Oh, absolutely. Um, throughout our tax history. Uh, it doesn't take long for tax pay, uh, payers to develop schemes to try and exploit a scenario. This is dangerous in that SARS is continuously tweaking these regulations and certain loopholes have already been closed. For instance, the leasing, leasing of equipment. Absolutely. Instead of buying it, you already get a benefit okay. in buying your equipment. So they won't be able to claim a 150% deduction on the leases? 
Absolutely. Kevin, thank you so much for that very, very insightful information. For those of you who would like to read a little bit more about this interview, please look out for the interview in the next Tax Talk magazine. Copies can be obtained on 011-476-5048. Until next time, goodbye.